Desmond Pro Sound Mix coming at you with a deconstruction of the mix tutorial. Uh, this track was produced by Rolly Collins. Um, it's a famous reggae artist, so I'm not actually allowed to use the vocals, but I can do the instrumental. So I'm just going to break down what I did and how I did it. So I'm going to play it first. start from left to right with the bass I have a DBX 160 from UAD I got an API from UAD and I have an EQ. I didn't want the EQ, but he said it needed more bass so I added the EQ. so I'm gonna solo I'm gonna mute everything so you can hear it by itself and um, so this is the bass and then I added a DBX so if you can hear that I'll solo it again I mean mute it okay play it then I took an API put on there wanted more bass so I added the eerie cue okay and we move on to the kick and solo that kick so on the kick I just used the BX boom so I'll play it without it And add it so it's not really doing a whole lot didn't need a whole lot take it off put it back on you can barely hear it okay we'll go to the snare On that one, I used an LA 2A. It's not taking off much, as you can see in the meter, not really doing much. I'll bypass it. Put it back on. Okay. Moving on. What's this instrument? Let's see. Play that. I didn't do anything to this one. I don't even remember what it is. Okay. I did absolutely nothing to it. I didn't think it needed anything. Okay. Now we come to the hi hat. I put an API on there. Bypass. So it had a little bit more lows in it, so I took it out with the API. Without, with, okay. And originally I had a LA-2A on there, but he said it was a little bright, the whole track, so I took it off. But with the LA-2A, it's like this. So I took it off. In fact, I can 
making active. All right. Moving on. Hit this one. And because I already had a snare, there was no need to turn this one up. There's nothing on it either. Okay. A lot of times less is more. And um, I try to minimize the amount of plugins that I use. Okay. Go to the next one. Next one has an API on it. Play it again. Take it off. Put it back on. Okay. Next one has an API also. Take it off. Put it back on. So it's real slight, but if you listen on headphones, you can hear it or oh, good monitors. Okay. Now we have the overheads. I put a BX boom on here and a API 550. So I'll play that. Now I did use a lot of the boom. I'm going to bypass. Okay, put the boom on. Put the EQ on. Okay. Bypass one more time. So you see what I did? Okay. Moving on. Next track. Which one is that? This one. Okay. I use an LA two A and an API. Turn API on. LA two A. gonna play it with the other track and these are overheads so now I'll play the next track I didn't do anything to this one where is it that's it didn't do anything to it and Next track, I use the Oxide Tape and I used, let's see, what else did I use? I used um, the BX Saturator. All right, so we will listen to this one. Now I'm gonna take off the saturator and the tape. So you can barely hear the tape working, but it's working. saturator 
So it wasn't a whole lot. These instruments were recorded well, so there was not a whole lot that I had to do. I bypassed them again. You see, it wasn't a lot. Okay. Moving on to the next one. I used the uh, piano centric from Waves on the dyno and play it without. Put it on. Did a little something. Take it off. Put it on. Gave it a little delay, a little doubler. Okay. The next one is the guitar. On the guitar, I used a few plugins. I used the Oxide. I used the Oxford Dynamics. Um, I used the Oxford EQ, just in the high end. I used an NS1 to get rid of a little bit of the hum from the guitar amp. And so this is a noise suppressor. And then I used the saturator from Brainworks. And I have a echo on here. And this is the Space Echo from Roland and the Reverb, which is Alex. Actually, I didn't even use Alex. I actually ended up using the Stereo Room from Eventide. Okay, so those are all the plugins on this track. I'm going to mute them, all of them, and bring them in one at a time. So we'll listen to it. So to me, this was a really good recording. I just had to make it fit. So I'm gonna turn them on all one at a time. So I really, I compress kind of a lot. And then my EQ. It's noise suppressor. As you can see, it's working. And then the uh, saturator. Probably couldn't even tell unless you listened on headphones. Now on the uh, space echo, I added a little. I didn't add that much. And on the reverb, reverb I added a little. Well, I actually added quite a bit. So that's the sound I ended up with. Okay. Kind of hard to hear. But I know it's working. Sounds good. Close these out. Okay, now we have another guitar. So play that guitar. I use a saturator on this one too. Can't even hear it. But it's doing a little something. And I also panned it in a way where you could hear the um, piano because the piano sounds real similar. And so if I would have left it, they're right on top of each other and you can't hear it. So I'm going to play the piano with it and let you hear it. So 
So now you can hear the piano kind of to the left and the guitar kind of to the right. And if I didn't pan them, they would have been right on top of each other. So you would have assumed that it was the piano with no guitar. So I'll play the guitar by itself. See, it's kind of to the right. And I'll play the piano by itself. It's kind of to the left. And that worked. Right? Now, I have a a instrument a drums bus i put an oxide on there and i used a townhouse compressor and with that i'm taking off about let's see not much let me hit the drums Basically, I'm taking off about 2 dB on the uh, compressor and I use a sidechain filter to filter out the drums so the drums didn't really get a whole lot of compression, the kicks mainly, and I filtered that, so um, along with the oxide that's what's on the drums and I also put a little reverb on it, very little, okay. <clears throat> Now, that's for the drums, for the whole instrument. So the drums and all the instruments go into this bus right here. And I use the Vertigo VSC2 compressor. I'll play it again. And you can see I'm not taking off much. And I also use a sidechain filter here, so it filters out 90 hertz. Because I really didn't want to squash the kicks a lot. So, roughly at max, it's taking off 2 dB. And that was it. Okay, and now on my master, I needed this song to sound kind of 80s. It's kind of an 80s, early 90s song. So, I use an NLS bus compress. I mean, the NLS... Uh, summing thing from waves it's got the uh spike the mic i usually use the mic on hip-hop but i needed it to be a little bit smoother so i used the neve and i turned it up about five deep four db all right of the drive and um that was first then i went with the abbey road now the Abbey Road vinyl does just that, it makes it sound kind of vinylish, but it also has a crackle and clicks because old records used to have crackles and clicks. I took that out. I didn't want to hear that. But as you can see in the uh, the the uh, master bus, there's a lot of noise going on, and you might be able to hear the hum. It makes a lot of hum. So if I bypass it, you'll see it go away. You see nothing now. So I, I turn it back on and you can see all of that hum. But that kind of made it more warmer, more analog. Then I use the vertigo again. So if I play this, you should see the vertigo. I actually smashed it kind of. I'm hitting it with 4 dB. It's like 4, 4.5 dB I'm taking off. And the reason for that, because I usually don't go into the bus compressor that hard. I usually fast, um, slow attack, fast release, and maybe 2 dB, if that much. But this song just had a whole lot of dynamics in it, and I had to tame it because listening to some of the artists older tracks that's how it was and i just assumed that's how they'd want it and that's how this type of genre if it was dance hall i wouldn't have done it but this type of reggae that's how it was always done how it, it sounds and then i um 
went to a tube tech and on the tube tech I didn't use the mid equalizer I don't believe nope I didn't but I did use the uh, bass and I boosted it at 30 Hertz 6 dB and then I cut at 30 Hertz about two and a half dB and it's on broad and at 3k or 3000 kilohertz I boosted about three and a half dB and then I cut right at 2 dB and my attenuate attenuation is at 10 so that's all this is doing so if I play it you should be able to hear it turn it off turn it on okay. turn it off turn it on and you see where that gave the drums some of its weight to kick and over here I use an ear EQ this is my favorite EQ and I did broad uh, EQ moves all right, and I cut out a lot of the high end because there was a lot of sizzle. I cut that out. So I'm going to turn this on and play. Turn it off. Turn it on. It gives it some depth and it kind of brings out the mids. Play it again. Turn it off. Turn it on. Okay. Moving on. I chose the K stereo to widen the track. And this is a UAD plugin. Play it again. Turn it off. You see everything went to the middle. So now I'm going to spread it again. Alright. Turn it off. After that, I used a BX refinement and I used that to tame the harshness also. So I'll play that. And you can see it kind of took a little bit of the highs off. There, I went to a one knob brighter. So the one knob. Turn it off. So it, it, it adds a little bit of highs back because I took it off with the refinement. And I have an L uh, L2. I don't never limit tracks. I hate limiting tracks. I don't find that I have to limit because I can always get the loudness I need. But I did take it off 0 0.3 dB just to catch any peaks. And that that's about it. Um, okay, I did use, like I said, the Space Echo. I used the Brainworks Delay 2500. And I had two reverbs on here. I originally I had the Lexicon, but I ended up not using it. And then I had the Waves, well, the UAD Pure Plate, I ended up not using it. And I went with 
the uh, Eventide stereo room. And then I put an EQ below that just to get rid of the lows and the highs. And I boosted it. Eh, 1.26 dB, I boosted it in the middle. And that's it. So now, I'm gonna do it all over again. I'm gonna go right to left this time. <clears throat> so let me unmute these. Well, mute them actually. And we'll start with that one in the piano. So let's see what we get. Once again, to reiterate, I don't use a lot of plugins. I don't feel that I need a lot of plugins. You got to make good decisions on why you're going to use a plugin. What's your purpose? What is it bringing to the mix or to that sound? Do you even need it? You know, uh, less is always more. And I listen to the song. That's the other thing. You really got to listen to a song before you even start working because you got to kind of figure out what you need to do and if you just start doing it you're probably going to mess up so I listen to it and then I listen to it again I listen to it one more time I went and ate I came back and I listened to it again then I start getting my mix and I'll tell I'll say it until I'm blue in the face if you see my fader moves my fader moves are not that high. They don't need to be that high. The reason why people turn their faders up is because they refuse to monitor at a decent level. I mix this song 98% on headphones. Okay. Um, I, I went to my speakers every now and then, but I use headphones. It's possible, you know. Um, you don't need to turn these things up. If you have your volume too low, you're going to end up turning these faders way up because you can't hear it. If your volume's right, then you're good to go. So um, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave some comments and I'll get back to you and answer all your questions. All right. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.